Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your metals market update for this very active Monday. And this is the 24th of April, 2017. And the time right now, well, it's about 12.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Interesting day in metals. You know, I've been prepping you that I thought <clears throat> that on the breakdown, if gold did break, and I didn't know if it would break or not, that the combination of the 18 and 200 day moving average of closes were going to be ultra important. They had come together. I had mentioned that on Thursday of last week and gone through it in other detail. Today, of course, we had a big break in gold. It did get to 1266, by the way. It is about $10 up and off the lows as the dollar got hammered as the euro went up. What happened? Well, the market is looking at Europe is now that populist movie movement may be coming to an end as France hopes that Mr. Macron, that there'll be an election on May 7th between two runners up, uh, the two top candidates in the election on Sunday for the head of France, and they turned out to be Ms. Le Pen, the far right, and Mr. Macron, more of a centrist. He is 39, he's never led government, he was an economic minister, I believe, within France, an appointed job, not an elected job. Uh, and we don't know that much really about him at this point. He, being an independent, he doesn't have the, the old time school parties, but so many believe that they want to stay within France in the Euro uh, that zone, that that is where he's getting his base from. We'll see what happens over the next two weeks. On the gold chart, we're in a corrective mode. Okay, no surprise here. The market has been on the weekly chart in a pattern where the 18-week average got over the 200. The market lifted itself up, and we're finally getting a bit of a correction, down $13 for the week at this point. When we come to an area chart of closes, you've gone from 1294 and a down thrust now into the 1276 area because you got lower highs, lower lows. So that's where we're at there. What does the market have to do to negate that? Let's come back here. I would say if you closed over 1289.10, you're going to negate that down thrust and go to a, a flat type of feel in the market. Now, when we take a look at the action here, you can see the market broke on to the downside. If I take out today's action, you can see where you were going. And I don't think it was definitive one way or the other here. But if you took out 1275, which you did, the question is how far could it reach down? If we look at the swing lines, we have a higher high and a lower low. So we're not trending at this point in time. This break low, though, had me looking at the key moving average. The 18-day moving average of closes is in red. The 100-day is far away. The 200-day is this deep gray line. It came in at 1266. The market reached right down to it, and it is about $10 over it. So what, what do we know? We know that the first support of two key numbers, the only reason I have the 200-day here is when the market got over it, I said, you know, when you first get over it, it's not unusual to pull back and test it. And that's exactly what we're doing on the daily basis. Doesn't mean it has to give ground one way or the other. It's been tested and it held up so far. When we look at Bollinger Bands, the rally it carried earlier to where we thought the market would run into the resistance. Remember back here, the zone of the 1290 level. It never really did get further than that. It pulled back and found support now at the 18-day moving average of closes. And momentum is pointing down. So the market has lost its upside momentum. It's got upside bias because it has stayed over the 18-day average, but momentum is pointing down, and the market is in an interesting area. The gold-silver ratio today gained back a fraction, not a real lot. It's at 71.30. It got up to 71.87. So silver is not acting anywhere near as powerful as gold had. But the story in gold, well, that's going to be the big question. 
Is it France? Is it the U.S. as we get into our debt ceiling uh, battles this week? Is it going to be a positive in any way once we see the, uh, the outline of the tax plan that Mr. Secretary of uh, Treasury Mnuchin is talking about and the President's talking about? As usual, the President uses adjectives that, cue, uh, that screw everybody up in their thinking, and that's because he'll say one thing when he really probably means that we're going to give you an outline of a plan, not here's the plan, and I think that's what you're going to be dealing with. When we come to silver, I was impressed that the market had, it's riding the lower Bollinger Band in a market that's getting oversold in a downtrend. It's not falling apart, let me make that ultra clear. I will be uh, looking for support if it continues to drop at the 100-day average, but it needs little reason here to now get its legs under it and figure out what next. Should it rally at this point to 1827, I would think there's willing sellers in the market. If it got up that high, it probably wouldn't be oversold, and you'd have to take out 1839 and a half to negate the downtrend. The copper market is still very much in the bear camp, lower highs, lower lows. It is very oversold, and it's probably why it's running out of volatility right here. Uh, it's a hard place to come into the market and do much when you're that oversold. The platinum market jumped on the bandwagon today of the bearish argument, lower highs, lower lows, a close both under the 18 and the 100-day average of closes with momentum pointing down. Therefore, I think the pros were and are willing sellers against this, let's call it 966 level. The negative is you got a $1,000 risk. you got to have a stop over 986. The positive is everything's turned down. Should the market want to accelerate to the downside, 942 possible objective. Should the market want to rally, your areas of resistance are 6970 to 6580. In the palladium market, you still have a pattern of, if we look at it, a higher high and lower low. It's a hard market to, to make much out of uh, here. I don't know what to do with that. I call it neutral as it's just sitting at the 18-day average of closes. Nothing there. Dollar index. The dollar index has a higher high and a lower low. It did get under the lower Bollinger Band of 98.99, but all morning long, what it's been doing is very gradually inching its way back up a little bit to see what's going on here, and, and I think that's what you got to look at. Did I say 98.95? The lower Bollinger Band is 99.14 and a half, so the market is trading about 17 points under it, in case I said that wrong. And that's the support. It can afford to stay under it a bit here, but it's very oversold, as you can see. It is under all the key averages, hard to be anything bullish on that market. Now, in the stock market, we're starting to get, as we go into the afternoon, some profit taking. But you're only three ticks off the high of the day in the NASDAQ and 24 off the high in the Dow. There's nothing here that's really bearish at this point, so still looks pretty interesting. You know, I want to talk to you about what I do. Twice daily, minimum, uh, and that's starts on once daily Sunday night and then twice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday I write my updates. And then what I do is I back up what I write with morning subscriber videos. Now because you're watching me in this video on YouTube I cannot say I want you to buy here, sell here, put a stop there, take profit there. I can tell you what I think basis the chart the pros are doing but not what I'd be recommending you do. I can do that in these subscriber videos. So I cover 40 charts. I really give you a, a morning full and then I, it, it coordinates itself with what I wrote the night before. I'll even say, no, I don't like that trade anymore. If it didn't get filled, here's what I want you to do, blah, blah, blah. But I give you the fundamentals. I give you a video picture of what's going on why I'm thinking what I am. And the idea there is give you some ideas. Maybe I throw a good idea at you. To get free access to it, if you haven't tried it before, call us at 866-973-2077. You can go to our website, www.irapstein.com, or you can click right up here. If you're watching me on YouTube, the form will appear. Take it from there, and we'll make everything happen. I'm Ira. You have a good day, and I will talk to you all in my financial market wrap-up in just a bit. Take care now.